here as well with uh, the, the Cisco UCSBU. Um, the same conversation we're going to have now is kind of dovetailing a little bit to what Jason was talking about um, with our API, but we're going to talk about some of the toolkits that are available for you to do scripting. So how you, if you guys want to use you know, things like PowerShell or Python or what have you, to, with our API, what, what SDKs do we have available to do scripting? So kind of, uh, again, going with, talking with Joe, what Jason was talking about in the, in the last session, everything that we've developed with our server platform uh, was intended to be very programmatic from day one. And what that means is we didn't, our, our, our APIs weren't a bolt-on after, uh, after the fact when we developed our servers and our platform. That was a foundational requirement day one that we did. We knew that people wanted to be able, if they're going to look at UCS, you know, looking seven years ago when we started developing UCS, um, we knew that people were wanting to be able to automate. They want to use our servers to integrate with their existing platforms and solutions. So our first, you know, one of, one of the main foundations was to make a, our platform to be fully programmatic. And when I say fully programmatic, what that means is our API came first. Our GUI and our CLI came second. So we, our, our thought process from day one is having that software embedded in the hardware and having an interface that everyone can use to do automation and integration with. And so that means, in our case, our GUI and our CLI were written to our API secondarily. And so the benefit that you get as a scripter or a DevOps person is it really enables you to say, hey, well, they're, you know, our GUI is a perfect example of how to integrate with our API. You guys can do the same thing if you want. If you want to do automation at a small level or at a large level, that information is available to you. So any of that data that you see in our GUI and our CLI or any of those actions that you can do, those are automatable. So first we're going to talk about um, our PowerShell library. So we have, uh, I'm just curious, how many people use PowerShell today in your, in your work? Like things like PowerCLI with VMware or NetApp, so a couple folks. How about Python or something like that? Does anyone do any, any Python scripting? So, okay. so um, We'll first talk about our PowerShell uh, library, and then we'll kind of talk about our, uh, our what we have with Python as well. Um, you know, again, today we have two two SDKs. We have a, a PowerShell SDK for UCS Manager uh, and our Cisco Rack Mount server. So one thing we didn't really talk about is you know we have servers that are managed by that UCSM software we talked about before, but we also have servers that can be managed in a standalone mode where they can be configured and and and, and managed you know outside of a Fabric Interconnect and being managed by UCSM. So we have an API for both of them. They look very much the same. And we have um, SDKs for both of them. So our PowerShell SDK, we've been developing for about three years. Um, it directly integrates with our API. And, and the cool parts about the, you know, our, our, the, like our PowerShell SDK and Python SDK is we do a lot of that, that those things that Jason was talking about before we call classes, how we define the objects in our XML model. We created objects in PowerShell to be able to you know, represent every object in our API. So we have a blade. We have an we have a, a object we created that describes the blade object. And we have commandlets around that, like you know, get, set, add, get, set, add, and remove you know, those particular blades or, or objects like VLANs and service profiles, et cetera. So the good part about it is, is you know, every, we have a fully featured AP, uh, uh, SDK uh, with both Python and PowerShell, and both of them, what we do is it kind of it's pretty interesting how we develop our our ISDKs. On, on when we actually are doing our development, and this again holds true for both Python and PowerShell, we you know when we create UCS Manager, we spit out an XML schema doc, and that specifies going into our API and coming out of the API. What data can you do? What operations are available? And, and uh, what can you set and, and configure. So we take that input and output schema, that data definition of our API, and we actually run it through a processing engine. And that processing engine actually spits out our, our, uh, those functions or commandlets, the functions for, us for, for Python and, uh, and the commandlets for PowerShell. And so the cool part about that is, in our case, we have for, you know, for our UCS manager PowerShell library, we have around 1,850 commandlets. And what that means is there's 1,850 functions that you can, that, you, that pretty much goes across 100% of our API for you to be able to automate and integrate with. 
On our Python side, we have a little bit reduced number, but it still it covers the API 100%. So that means, you know, no matter if you're using PowerShell or Python, you have that capability to do automation. So if you look at some of the operations you might do with UCSM, UCS Managed Server, you might query for hardware inventory. So get information about your chassis, your fabric interconnects. What's the health, what's the state of those, those particular items? I can get information about my service profile. So get information about the configuration that I've applied to a server. How many NICs does it have applied? What are the MAC addresses? Are the worldwide port names on the HBAs? What's the UID? I can get information about my server. So you know the physical servers, no matter if it's a blade server or a rack mount server, you know, what is what's the CPU memory, what are all the serial numbers? I can use this data to auto-populate our your own CMDB. That's a big use case we have a lot with our SDKs is using them to actually populate other databases and data models inside of. So all that's available uh, in UCS Manager, so you can actually query it and put it into another item. We can do configuration operations, so things like creating pools and policies. So, for those who are new to UCS, you know we create we have um, we have identifier pools that allows you to grab a, a MAC address, a worldwide port name, or node name, or those types of things, and apply it to a server, and then have policies that des describe how to configure the server. So, like setting your BIOS settings, your boot order. Um, and, and those types of things. Those are things that you can create in the UCS Manager as well as create through our API and then reconfigure your service profiles to maybe reference a new version of a particular policy. Well, was, um, if you guys only get one thing out of the presentation, if you're gonna use um, our Python or PowerShell SDK, remember this command list called convert to UCS command list. So, you know, a lot of times I see it, people, you give me, when I tell them we have 1,850 commandlets or, or functions in Python or PowerShell, their, head, their eyes just explode and their head explodes. How in the heck am I going to learn that? Well, um, this convert to capability, this conversion capability, what it does in UCS Manager, when you launch a GUI, our GUI is using that API to talk back and forth with UCS Manager. And so we're using that to our advantage in an SDK because since it's, it's a Java GUI, we log every com everything that goes, the communications that go back and forth. So we take that log, that Java log file sitting on your laptop or desktop or jump host and convert it into code for you. So this convert to will actually go and here I'll actually do a quick demo of it. Here I've got a PowerShell window and I apologize, I tried to make the uh, the screen as big as possible, but what I ended up running is I got a convert to dash UCS commandlet running, and this is sitting there just waiting for you know new uh, XML calls to get written into my running running Java GUI. So if I go over to my Java GUI, so you can see my Java GUI is on the right for UCS Manager, and on the left I've got a uh, I've got um, you know PowerShell window running. So for instance, if I wanted to learn how to automate the creation of a VLAN. We're going to call the VLAN Bob123. Hit OK. And what you can see is that popped up some code. Instead of giving me XML output, it gave me the output in PowerShell form. So it says get UCS LAN cloud, pipe into add UCS VLAN, name Bob123 and ID123. So the cool part is, is now I don't know anything. If you're, if you're a new user to UCS or a new user to PowerShell or Python, I can quickly do things in the GUI, figure things out, and then learn how to automate them quickly and easily. So if I hit control C here and run that convert to command again as well, there's a nice another option called dash Python. So if I go and let's create another VLAN, I want to learn how to actually use our SDK for Python to do the same operation. Okay, create this one called Joe123 and give an ID of 123. So I hit OK here, it'll pop up, um, you know, it'll pop up the, uh, there's the job, the Python code that I think should do that exact same operation. So the cool thing is, is 
you know, you can, you know, you can do very simple operations like creating VLANs, creating uh, or deleting VLANs and those types of things. Or you can do more complex operations, you know, things like, you know, creating a service profile or, you know, configuring things on uh, your administrative settings like Syslog and S uh, SNMP and LDAP and, and those types of things. Um, on our community's website, there's a whole lot of scripts um, that you, you can get that people have created to do, um, you know, bringing up a new UCS domain and those types of things and configuring things from start to finish or as well as making a lot of different changes. So again, quick and easy way to learn um, and, and, and such. Another uh, thing that you can do as well is uh, if, you've, if you have like an existing system, as an example, and this is option three of how to use it, I can actually do a configuration backup of UCS. So what that means is I can actually go to UCS Manager, say backup my configuration. So if I've already got an existing domain that I configured three months ago, three years ago, or what have you, and I want to learn how to actually re-automate that configuration, this guy at the bottom. Let's convert to UCS commandlet dash UCS backup. I provide the backup file and then do the output path as a PowerShell script. And so the cool thing is, is if you have an existing domain that has a full configuration that you want and you want to learn how to automate that exact configuration, grab a backup, an XML-based backup, and then output it to a, 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 a you know, to a, a, a script that then you can edit and use bits and parts of it that you would need to do automation. So this, you know, this particular conversion capability makes our SDKs a lot more approachable. And I've talked to a lot of people that have used them that said that, and what I was showing before, by the way, was something that Jason was mentioning uh, in the previous one was uh, I was running this against our platform emulator. So I'm running a platform emulator on my laptop. I'm running uh, PowerShell, in this case, on my laptop. And so I'm being a developer without having to have hardware. And the cool part about, you know, I'm, you know, about this is, I can take that, that, that emulator, if you have real hardware, I can actually point it at the real hardware, tell it to say, here, do a live import of my environment into the emulator, so it'll emulate all of the exact hardware you have in your, in your, in your, uh, in your running domain, and then go grab a configuration backup and apply that as well, and boom, now you have a, uh, now you have a nice environment to be able to play with. I can actually do development with that and such. I write a lot, of, a lot of examples that are on our community's website, and that's how I develop, personally. I actually start, you know, I start with the emulator, do a lot of my development there, and then once I get an understanding of exactly what I want to do, and I've got, a, I've got a prototype ready, I do it with my quality assurance and testing against a real system. But all my first dev, you know, development and hacking are all done against a, 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 an emulator first. So again, that's, you know, this is the platform emulator. We've got a link here at the top, uh, communities.cisco.com slash UCSPE. That's where you can download our emulator for UCSM. And we get a lot of questions of, well, hey, I'm doing automation with my C-Series server. Maybe you're doing OpenStack integration and you're wanting to use C-Series servers to manage. Well, we're working on an emulator now for our, sim, for our standalone RackNot servers that emulates the SimC. The, the SimC is the baseboard management controller running in the server. So that's something that'll be out, um, you know, later this year, hopefully, and uh, or early next year, sometime, and such. So that's um, that, that's coming as well. So you'll be able to, you'll be able to uh, emulate both, uh, you know, a real a UCS manager environment as well as a SimC environment. So um, just to talk quickly about our our SDK for uh, IMC. So IMC being again a standalone rack mount server. We have a PowerShell and Python SDK for that as well, and you can do, it's, it's more simplistic because the scope of control is a lot smaller. Instead of managing a set of fabric interconnects, your IO modules, chassis, and the, and the information and configuration for up to 160 servers with UCSM, this guy only controls one server, and just the actual server itself. So you know, when you, if you have a Rackbot server that is standalone, this is something that you could utilize to do the automation and configuration of it. Again, it's a lot smaller, you know, the number of commandlets are around two to three hundred, just because the data that's being stored and the, the amount of uh, configuration you can do with it is much, much smaller. But you can do some things that are pretty cool, like uh, do firmware updates via scripting, where we can, you know, basically do all of the firmware updates on the actual server itself via script. You can do things like scriptable vMedia where if you want to actually do an automation where you can create an ISO dynamically 
uh, map it to a, a blade and do an operating system install or do some, do some sort of configuration, you can use the scriptable vMedia capabilities we have with our IMC as well to do that kind of level of automation. It has a, you know, this, this um, you know, our, our SDKs have a conversion capability for it as well. It's a little bit different in the standpoint of, um, it, you know, our SimC runs a Flash UI, not Java in this case. But we have a capability that allows you to um, make the changes in your IMC first and then get the information and convert that into uh, code as well. So I got a quick demo of that as well. Um, in this case, I've already logged into a, uh, into a IMC already. And so what I'll end up doing is, let's say I've already created some BIOS configuration. I've, I've set some of the BIOS settings like VT turned on or hyper-threading turned on or what have you. I can do a command that like get your IMC BIOS settings and then tell it to do a hierarchy uh, flag, which a hierarchy, what that means is it'll do a recursive uh, um, you know, query for everything that's a child to that and give me every BIOS setting for the entire system. So you can see all of the objects were returned. And so what I can do is take that same output and run it in to convert to IMC command, but in this case, I'm going to put it into a particular file. And what this is going to do is going to take that output that we previously discussed as informational output, and then we're going to run it through um, that conversion capability. And I want to open up a uh, you know the file here now we're done. And it basically showed me here's the code again to how to set every BIOS setting on that particular server. So again, I can go do it in, the, do it in our SimC GUI, very similar, and then instead of watching a log file, then I would query for the data that we set and then pipe it into a conversion capability again. So again, some really, you know, really quick ways to be able to take advantage of uh, our APIs and not have to be an XML expert. You don't have to be an API expert. It makes it a lot, a lot easier for you know, a de DevOps type of guy to be able to do automation and those types of things. So for, from, you know, from now on, where, where's the best place to go learn? Um, you know, there's two places I'd recommend you go. Go to developer.cisco.com. That has a lot of the information um, you know, on, uh, about UCS specifically, doing integration as well as our, you know, our developer network links to our community site as well. So communities.cisco.com slash UCS. Um, you know, those two places will get you to the information of where our SDKs are, where some sample code is, those types of things. and allows you to be able to learn how to do automation and, and, uh, and, and then also work and network with your peers that uh, you say, hey, I got this problem to solve, I don't know how to solve it. You know, you know our DevNet and our, our community sites are the best place to, to learn from. Any questions? Okay. Well, I'll, be, I'll stick around if you know, anybody wants to ask questions. Uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be sticking around and you guys can uh, you know, feel free to jump up and, and, and ask me a one-on-one question on, and, uh, and such. Thanks.